Good afternoon, everybody. I hope all of you healthy and safe. So beginning of our Dharma class, as usual, please generate Bodhicitta. Therefore, first visualize all sentient beings are on you, are on us, and try to realize the truth, the reality of all sentient beings. When we look at the people around us, <clears throat> We guess, we believe those people looks, look very happy. Actually, none of the human being not really happy. Also, when we visualize the sentient beings in the lower realms, they also have a lot of sufferings and problems. Therefore, visualize all sentient beings, try to understand the, rea the reality of all sentient beings. I mean, all sentient beings always wish to be happy, always, always wish to free from suffering, but they cannot be freed from suffering. None of the sentient beings really achieve the ultimate happiness. Therefore, based on knowing the the actual, the reality of all sentient beings, and you can cultivate love, unbiased love, pure love towards all sentient beings. So when we have pure love towards all sentient beings, then we really have a strong aspiration, strong uh, desire to benefit, to have all sentient beings. This one, we need to know based on our own experience. When you truly love someone, then you are always ready to support the person, help the person, share things purely. When you purely, truly love someone, someone has a little problems, you really wish a person, you know, free from a little problem. So when you see, you know, the person whom you really truly love, when the person can get little good things, you feel very happy. So based on our own experience, so all sentient beings, when we look at them, when we see they have a you know, suffering, then we really wish, you know, free them from suffering because we purely, 
truly love all sentient beings. So without having pure love, truly love, we cannot have pure compassion. Therefore, second, based on uh, having pure love towards all sentient beings, the second, we need to cultivate the pure compassion. Therefore, please everybody, you know, cultivate pure compassion towards all sentient beings. So when we, you know, generate compassion, the second, the next, there's a question arise in our mind. I really wish all sentient beings free from suffering. I really wish all sentient beings, you know, be happy. But this moment, so we have a just strong wishing, a strong desire you know, to be all sentient being, to be happy, free from suffering. But we ourselves still, you know, stuck in the samsara. We don't have, you know, the power free all sentient being from suffering. We don't have a power and ability to bring all sentient beings from suffering, from the samsara, you know, bring them into the enlightened state. Because we are set, stuck in samsara. That this is the reason, you know, we need to practice bodhicitta. When we practice bodhicitta, many people think, oh, so I want to be Buddha. Yes, you know, we wish to be Buddha, achieve the enlightened state. Achieving Buddhahood is not only our own benefits, it's mainly benefiting for others. Therefore, second, based on pure love, compassion, then generate bodhicitta. In order to generate bodhicitta, the first, the important condition or important the cause is pure, great compassion. The pure and great compassion can be developed if we develop pure love, unbiased love. Then the pure and unbiased love can be generated can be practiced when we realize the truth, the reality of the samsara, the reality of the being who, you know, born in samsara. So please remember, you know, the steps. First, second, third. The fourth, so when you have a pure love, you purely love all sentient beings, then you have a compassion. The compassion becomes pure. When you have pure compassion, then you have a bodhicitta. Very easy to have bodhicitta. When we have a bodhicitta, then the bodhicitta can 
you know, reduce, can control the self-centered attitudes. The self-centered attitude. Right? Therefore, please generate bodhicitta, mean visualize all sentient beings and wish to be Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Please <coughs> generate bodhicitta based on pure love, compassion, then bodhicitta. <coughs> Then the mind bodhicitta, which is we have been uh, generating, so which is we have generated the bodhicitta, we always hold in our mind like the most, most important practice. The most important practice. If you have a the bodhicitta mind always with you, you never have a sense of hatred. If someday you get angry, the angry can last for a short time. Then, you know, then second, when you be remembered the bodhicitta, the anger going to be disappeared. So when we have a bodhicitta, the mind which is wish to be Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. When you see some of your neighbors or friends or relatives, you know, you know, becoming economically better, physically better, you know, life become more successful. You never ever have a jealousy. But the people, you know, becoming more successful, you feel very much happy. So bodhicitta is very important for us. It can, you know, control the self-centered attitude. Also control the anger. And of course the hate. Also jealousy. Also ego and pride. So when you practice bodhicitta, you fully accept all sentient beings like your dearest, you know, mother, your dearest father, your dearest friend. So when you fully accept all sentient beings, most important in your life, or most important for your life, you never ever have a kind of pride, ego. But, but only practicing bodhicitta can reduce all the negative thoughts can surprise, can reduce, can be reduced, but cannot eliminate. Therefore, next, you know, the, we need to, uh, we must have the, the particular wisdom, mean the mind which relies emptiness. The mind which relies emptiness can eliminate ignorance because the ignorance ignorance and the wisdom which relies emptiness these are two different kinds of mind the, the wisdom arise the ignorant going to be reduced the ignorant increase the wisdom can be reduced can be you know uh, become more weaker then the wisdom which realizes emptiness, the ignorance, 
the true mind is totally opposite. Total opposite. Right? Therefore, for us, we, we must have a very strong kind of uh, motivation. Motivation for realizing emptiness. Emptiness. So, please, you know, none of you should not think, oh, I am a very ordinary person. I don't think I can realize emptiness. No, you should not think that way. Also, you should not think I am not that intelligent person. I don't think I can realize emptiness. I don't think I, I, can, understand, I can understand emptiness. No, you know. In order to realize emptiness, you don't have to be, you know, very intelligent person. In order to realize emptiness, you, you, you don't have to be, you know, like an extraordinary person. Also, you should not think, I don't think I can realize emptiness because I don't study, you know, Dharma. Don't study Buddhism for many years. No. So realizing emptiness means I think I need to talk. Realizing emptiness. You don't have you don't you don't have to be very intelligent. You don't have to study for many years. You don't have to be extraordinary person. Very simply, you need to change your perception. You need to change your perception. Until today, what you are perceived things to us. For us, everything looked like very independent, you know, phenomena. Everything looked like very independent. Be independent, exist independently. This is, you know, our concept towards the thing. Since today, we just believe whatever appeared to me, the physical or non-physical thing, whatever, you know, things appeared to me, is appeal to me, but things are not exist independently. All phenomena, you know, totally lack of independent existence. You just think that way. If you think every day, nothing exists independently, things are there, but not there as an independent, then your, your perception will change. Change. For example, you know, one person without truly understand someone, the person become very crazy about the other person. Let's say one man become very crazy about a woman, or one woman become very crazy to a man because they really don't know the, the, the reality. So have to realize the reality. So in order to realize, realize in the reality, you have a two kind of options. Option number one, simple, you, are, you must think, oh, those, this person is look so attractive. Actually, he or she is not. You just think, you just think that way. The second option, then you need to study, you need to analyze very closely to the person. Then one day you will, realize, oh, this person is look so beautiful, so attractive. Actually, when I study closely, the person is not attractive as I believe, right? So first, just start to, you know, kind of familiarize your mind with the emptiness. Second, use the logic, right? So today we're going to study about more precisely about the ignorance, ignorance.
The ignorant is the conceptual mind. The, is a mind you know, without confusion. It's just simply say, ignorant is a mind which apprehend thing are as an independent phenomena. Also, wisdom is a mind. Is a mind, but the wisdom apprehend things are empty of independent, empty of you know inherent existence. Until now, so until today, for us, we never try to understand, we never try to realize how things exist, how things exist. Right. So since today, if you really start to you know look very closely to the phenomena, how the phenomena exist, how the phenomena establish, look more closely to the phenomena and try to understand that the truth reality of phenomena, then you will realize emptiness. If you just only studying, you know, the Madhyamaka text or the logic reason, not you are not really looking closely at the phenomena. Yes, you have a lot of knowledge about emptiness, but emptiness never going to realize because you you never try to look, you know, closely how the thing exists. Because we follow the Mahayana teaching. Also, we practice Mahayana uh, path. So there's a no you know, exception. So we have to realize emptiness. Emptiness. Therefore, I said beginning, you don't have to be very intelligent. You don't have to study for many years. You don't have to be very extraordinary person. Very simple, ordinary person can realize emptiness if you're able to change your perception about the phenomena. So when we wear the, you know, like a sunglass, when you look at the, when you look at our own you, you can see, you know, the, the things look like yellowish, like milky color, like, you know, more greeny. We can perceive, but we don't believe, oh, the things are totally, you know, yellow and red and blue. Same way, when you look at the phenomena closely, the things appear to you as an independent phenomena. But once you realize emptiness, you don't really believe that things exist independently. So just try to change your perception. Then, you know, you're going to realize emptiness. So without taking a lot of time, so we'll do you know a little bit about <coughs> state of <our> ignorance. <coughs> Page number two one two, two hundred twelve. The uh, second paragraph. Question: How does ignorance superimpose intrinsic nature? Right. That means how for us how we perceive thing things are intrinsic existence. How? What are the cause? Things appear to us intrinsic existence. That means ignorance is the cause to appear things as a intrinsic existence. Reply. In general, there appear, appear in Chandakirti texts many usage of verbal conventional such as nature, essence, with regarding to the object that exists only conventionally. What does mean this sentence? So when you read the Chandakirti text, Nagarjuna text, you know, Buddha teaching, there's so many something you can say, you know, uh, the truth, essence, nature. So the meaning of the 
a like nature essence is a, you know is is a different meaning when we say oh man the person nature is oh the person naturally he is very angry person also we use the nature oh this food is naturally hot cold this what we are talking about based on the conventional reality this mean there is you know meaning of nature essence with regarding to the objects that exist only conventional phenomena phenomena conventionally however here in the case of uh, reification by ignorance this is with regarding object be the person or other phenomena a conception that those phenomena have ontological stood status the way of existing and of themselves without being possessed uh, possessed it through the force of awareness here what does mean nature and essence regarding to the object that exists uh, sorry regarding uh, object with the regard uh, regard to object by the person or other phenomena now this you know this is kind of time we have to be very serious the object like a person or other phenomena right so when you think about yourself how i exist how my house is exists how my car is exists so you need to analyze about self you yourself and the rest of the phenomena phenomena so before we analyze for us everything exists by their by their side think about a car when we think car for us car is look like you know they are independently there also when we think about me right, right i and me for us me and i is there as a independently this is our percept this is our you know, concept about the being about the phenomena we never think all the things around us you know you know uh, establish by mind establish by thoughts establish by awareness we never think that way right therefore he is what he has say however here the case of reification of by ignorance that is with the regard to object be the person or other phenomena a conception that this phenomena have ontological status that mean for us all phenomena has a you know uh, exist from their side themselves without being posited through the force of awareness without you know being uh, posited through the force of awareness posited mean posit you know they established by force of the thoughts the easy example for us we just rem- uh, try to imagine like 1000 years ago 1000 year years ago the the the, the land we, where we we live it wasn't singapore it was just piece of island 
piece of land. There wasn't concept of Singapore, right? Then somehow, one day, somebody or some person label as a Singapore. Then whole land we establish project as a Singapore. That means we, we label, we give a name as a Singapore to the island. The name Singapore established by a person or group of people. The name, you know, the term or the name established by a person, the things come from the mind. That means you can see Singapore was, you know, before the piece of land, our land, and, and maybe a group of people, you know, somebody just level, just named, oh, this area like Singapore. So when you look at that, when you study about the land, the land doesn't change anything, Give, giving, you know, name as a Singapore or without Singapore. The land was just a piece of land, right? That means that the land established as a Singapore by a person who has a thought. That means Singapore established by, you know, force of a thought from a person. Without naming as a Singapore, the island, just island, no, you know, it wasn't Singapore. That means what he is saying, force of the awareness means force of the thought. Awareness. The different object, the different object that is the apprehended by that ignorant conception. That means the phenomena which is exists, which is established without depend on thoughts, without depends on term. The phenomena is a different object of ignorance. A different object of ignorance. We thought depending on thoughts, we thought depending on name. If something exists as a, you know, like a car, then the car is actually object of negation. There, the car is a different object of ignorance. Now, you really, you know, we don't just, you know, read the book, just only study. First, if I ask you a question, how the car is established? How the car being established? How? Right? So this one you will know when you study about history of the car, history of the train, history of the aeroplane. Before there wasn't concept of car so and so and somebody you know, put so many things together, then they just level, this is a car. A car established based on the person thoughts, you know, power of the thoughts, power of awareness. We thought, uh, depending on name and thoughts, something exists, the existing phenomena can be independent phenomena, can be uh, what we call uh, intrinsic phenomena. Right? Therefore, when we try to negate the negation, make sure you fully understood the meaning of negation. We thought, you know, fully understood without understanding the negation. If you try to negate the negation, then you're going to negate the actual 
phenomena. The actual phenomena exists only established by thoughts and men. The, the negation is not existent phenomena. So we thought depending on name and thoughts, if there's something is there, the thing can be the actual negation. So this one you did, you know, just you have to be, you know, sit very comfortably, relaxedly. You look at our own, you ask a question, look more closely how things exist. The next, uh, there's a quotation from the uh, 400 stanza. Before then they say here, those phenomena is identified as a hypothetical self. This means self, intrinsic nature. Mean the thing which is exists without depending on thoughts. The phenomena is hypothetically self intrinsic nature. Then the from the Arya Deva, all of this without its own power. Therefore, there's no self. All of this is without its own power. Then the things around us, all the phenomena which is around us, the phenomena are there. But they don't have their own kind of independent existence. It, it, they doesn't have a, it, it, any of the phenomena doesn't have their own kind of existence. Everything depends on other. Therefore, there is a no self. Commenting of the Chandra Kriti commentary on the 400 stanza, it is that which existent, sorry, it that which exists essentially, number one, exists essentially, intrinsically, autonomously, without depending on other, are like synonymous. You know, exists essentially, exists intrinsically, exists autonomously, exists without depending on other. Those are synonymous, synonymous. Thus he says that those are synonymous. What are the synonymous? Please repeat, please read. Exist essentially, exist intrinsically, exist autonomously, and exist without depending on other are synonymous. This means, you know, the marker pen the, is exist, is exist, but not exist essentially. This is exist, but not exist intrinsically. This is exist, not exist autonomously. It is exist, but not exist without depending on other, right? That means this phenomena exists depend on other. Those are synonymous. Now, emptiness also. This, the pen, yeah, is the pen, the, the reality of this pen is empty of essentially existing. This pen, the reality of this pen is empty of inherent existence, empty of autonomously existing, empty of without depending on other. Right? Therefore, when you meditate on emptiness, first you need to remember a particular object, then you do the analysis 
after analyze then you will notice yeah the things are there but they are not there as independent that means your mind is quite close to emptiness synonymous without what does mean without depending on other does not mean not depending on causes and condition is it other refer to subject subject right does mean all phenomena cannot be exist without depending on other what does mean all phenomena exist depend on a subject depends on the thoughts right so then is i think somebody may think oh how come if there's no subject then there's not such as you know phenomena for example if there's no human being then there cannot be a car yes they will be understand we told human being who we build you know who who produce the car very simple so without human being is there any mountain is there any water is there any like a flower or no right if you ask a question to me i will say without human being or without a you know kind of being then there's no flower there's no mountain there's no water but there's something there the things are not is not mountain no water because nobody level it doesn't have a kind of you know concept of mountain because there's no conception because there's nobody you know level as a this is a mountain like i told you singapore you know thousand years ago there was a piece of land the piece of land was in singapore then you know somebody level somebody named named then since there's a land and there's a singapore right so when you think th this way that's mean what what does mean that's mean whatever appeared to me as a beautiful object as a ugly object as a big object small object it is depend on your perception right that mean everything established by our own thoughts established by our own mind we thought mind there's no such as you know big and small you know hot and cold so this one i think when you when you watch documentary about the uh the the space space right when the people you know walks do the repair the international space when the person reach there for them there's not really such as say this is heavy this is light everything is moving around even the water for us when we drink put water in mouth is a liquid when the water reach to the space is not just become like a bubble right that means for us living on this this earth planet for us water mean liquids stone mean heavy this is based on our perception right then the, the other being who living in different planets they have a different idea about water you know fire and mountain and for different idea that mean all the phenomena established based on our own mind for example for example money right singapore dollar in 
Singapore, the Singapore crown like a uh, like a money is very important. When you show somebody so what, he has a money, or he or she can buy so many things from Singapore. If you bring this uh, Singapore dollar, you know, like like different country, Africa, like a when you show people doesn't have a concept of this money. If you you know give the cash, they won't give you anything. For them, money mean according to their country. Currency mean according to their country. Right? Also very interesting about we think about the like a money, like coin, like bank system. Just when you look at, you know, look around the money, I don't have money, huh? I don't have. Look at the like a cash. When you look around, it's just piece of paper. Just piece of paper. It's a you know you need design, design by person. Then so we accept since since today, this is cash, $10. $50, $100, $1,000. We have, we have a name. We accept since tomorrow, the piece of paper function as a $100, $1,000. When you look at the size of, you know, $100 the size is almost same same. But it has a different, you know, function. How the function come? How? So we create a piece of paper with our number and design, then we establish by our thoughts, our mind, since today this is cash, this is a dollar. I, I told you a very interesting uh, example in India, I think uh, 12 or I think exactly 12 o'clock, the Indian Prime Minister says, since today, all the old currency, no more standard. So tomorrow morning, all the cash is become totally paper, totally piece of paper, no value. How come? Right? So this means based on the currency we can understand, it's such as there's no really say, you know, like a, things are not, not there, but still function as a cash because we establish. Likewise, all phenomena like that, like that. Therefore, with that, without depending on other, does not mean not depending on cause and condition, causes and condition. Instead, other, you know, uh, refer to the subject. Subject means mind and thoughts. A conventional consciousness. Yeah, that means refer to the subject. What is subject? The consciousness. And something is said not depend on other due to not being, you know, posited through the force of the conventional consciousness. Therefore, autonomously refer to the nature of an object that has its own unique ontological status or manner of being. It is just this that is called essence or intrinsic nature. So here everybody you know read very carefully this uh, this few sentence uh, read and reflect make a reflection about the meaning meaning because it is so so important to control our ignorance try to realize the ignorance is you know, mistake in mind. So in order, to in order to realize the ignorant is mistake in mind, we need to know how the thing exists. Right. Now the example is, uh, next example. Take for example, the case of imaginary snake that is mistakenly, you know, ascribed it to rope. That means there's a rope, rope, you know, the color is look like snake. And you know, the uh, maybe evening time, 
not so clear. So when you see the, you know, the coil of rope, suddenly you think, wow, there's a snap. There's a snap. This is the example. Right? There's a first the coil rope. Look, the color is look like snack. Second, and you know, uh, the, the area is quite darkness, not enough light to see the, you know, the coil is rope, not snack. This analogy is darkness, mean we have ignorance, right? Then the rope, the coil rope, is color and shape, it look like a real snack. So due to the, you know, darkness, for us, the coil rope appeared as a snack, then we skipped, we skipped. Right? Now we need to know why we have a thought. Oh, the coil rope look like a snack. Because there's a two reason. One, there's no enough light to see, you know, it's a not cynic, it's a, you know, a rope. Darkness means we have a ignorant thoughts. The number two, the shape and color is look like snake. So we are mistaken the actual snake and the fake snake. There's no snake. Still, we, you know, pose it, the coil rope as a snake. This is analogy. Then, all phenomena are looked like for us, the coil snake. Coil rope appeared us as a snake. Because we have a ignorance. We don't have a, you know, the wisdom to know the truth, reality of the phenomena. Number two, we have a confusion, the actual phenomena and the artificial phenomena. Therefore, so we have an attachment, we have an anger, we have an ego. For example, you know, this day there are so many kind of artificial diamonds. So, the, like a, the fake diamond is exactly look like diamond, right? So one night you are going around the like a park, like evening walking or early morning walking. When you found the fake kind of diamond, you really think, oh, I found a diamond. You become, you are so happy. Then there's an attachment because you don't know it's a fact. For you, you don't understand which one fact, which one real. For us, we don't understand which one is the real, like a, a marker pen, which one is the not, which are not real marker pen. We confuse the real marker pen, also the, the pen which is, remember, was a superimposed by ignorance. So we have a mistake in, right? There are snake here. Take for example, the case of an imaginary snake. Imaginary means there's no such a snake. That is mistakenly ascribed to a rope. If we leave aside how it is ascribed it from the perspective, uh, apprehend a snake and try to analyze what the snake is like in terms of the future cannot be analyzed. So this is an analogy. The actual meaning, it is similar with regard to this phenomena, you know, the general phenomena. Suppose that we leave aside analyze of how they appear. How they ap appear how they appear to our conventional awareness and analyze the object themselves, asking 
What is the meaning of being of this phenomena? We find they are not established in any way as a any way as an independent phenomena. Ignorance does not apprehend the phenomena is this way. Right? So when that means I said at the beginning, we need to look very closely the phenomena. So when you look very closely how the phenomena exists, how to, how to appear to us, how how to appear to us, how to exist, then there's a duality. When things appear to us, for us, things are as independent. When you analyze the phenomena, the phenomena never be independent phenomena. Therefore, we have a duality. Appear into another way, exist into different way. That means there's a duality. We, until today, you know, we don't realize there's duality. Duality means, you know, it's a, just true. Appear something in other way, exists on other way. That means there's a duality. This is the uh, example, the, you know, the, uh, the imaginary snake that is mistakenly ascribed it as a rope. Then the actual meaning is here, it is similar with regard to this phenomena. Suppose that we leave aside analysis of how they appear. How they appear to conventional awareness and analyze the object themselves. That means two things. How the things appear to the consciousness. How the thing actually exists. Appear to the consciousness as an independent phenomena. When we analyze nothing, we cannot find anything exists independently. That means we realize there's a duality. Right? There's a duality. So until today, <coughs> we just follow and believe what things appear to us. Things appear to us independent. Also, we believe. Innately, we should only be believe, you know, things as independent. Right? So this, we must need to know uh, the example and the example we must apply the actual phenomena. Then there's a uh, quotation from, uh, from 400 stanza says, without any doubt, what exists only through the presence of con uh, conceptual thought and does not exist without conceptual thoughts, definitely do not exist essentially. In the case of snake, there is input to input it to a coil rope, right? The first one very important. Without any doubt, what exists, whatever exists, only through presence of conceptual thought and does not exist without conceptual thought. Definitely do not exist essentially. In the case of snack, that is imputed to coil rock. Right? That means all phenomena around us look like the coil rock. Coil rock. Right? So now we do, you know, some kind of uh, our own analysis, not just follow the uh, textbook. First, now we all commonly, you know, remember a car as a car, chariot or car. We commonly yeah, remember a car. When the car appeared to our eyes consciousness, when the car appeared to our, you know, the conceptual thoughts, the, the car appeared to the consciousness as an independent car. 
that when we pointed a car, we do never realize the car is established by our thoughts. Please remember a car is there's a car. So how the car appears to us? The car appears to us as a independent, exists independently, exists essentially, exists autonomously, exists without depending on the subject or consciousness. This is reality for us, reality for us, right? Now, second, we analyze how the car is exist. Then you go closer to the car, still you can see car. You just reach to the next to the car, you can see the body of the car, upper body is not a car. When you enter in the car, we can see all the seats. The seats are not the car. Look in front, in front, you can see the string, gear, you know, all the things. Each of them is not a car. Then we come out from the car, we look from the ender. When you look at it, we can see the four wheels, right? The, also the or go bumper, whatever you can see, all of them not a car. Then you open the infant door, the trunk. When you open, you can see you know, all the wires, all the engines. None of them a car. Right? It doesn't mean the car is not there. The car is there. The car is not there as an independent. It is not as an essentially existent, autonomously existent. Right? Therefore, this is the best on the car. Second, we analyze a person. Now everybody, you know, visualize or remember a particular person. Maybe your friend. Your, you just everybody reflect on your friend. Right? Oh, yeah, he or she is my friend. Yes, this is true. He or she is your friend. So when now you look close, you go closer to the friend. Can you see your friend? Yes, I can see. Which one is your friend? The head? No. The eyes? No. The air? No. The nose? Tongue? All parts of body. You analyze piece by piece, parts by parts. You cannot find your friend, your, your friend from the within the body. Now you look inside. When you enter in, you know, your friend's body, what you can see, you can see lungs, heart, liver, kidneys, but none of them are your friend. Right? This means before we analyze, before analyzing, for us, the friend appeared to us as an independent friend. When we analyze, we cannot find independent friend. So the independent existing friend, the independently existing car is the different object of the ignorance. The independently existing car 
independently existent friend is a negation. So we need to negate the independent friend, independent, independent car, independent all phenomena. Right? That means the negation. We need to negate the negation, not the actual phenomena. We need to negate the negation, not the friend. Now you can see the friend, there's a friend kind of two kinds of one is the exists, which is posited through your thoughts. This is exist. Second, there's a friend which is appeared to us as an independent. The friend is the negation we need to negate. Right? So this is based on the uh, analogy using the snack. Then uh, uh, Arya Deva says very clearly, without any doubt, what exists only through the presence of conceptual thoughts and does not exist without conceptual thoughts. Definitely does not exist essentially. Then also you can see definitely does not exist inherently. Definitely does not exist autonomously. Definitely, definitely does not exist depending on other. Then there's, a, there's another uh, quotation from Chandrakirti. How phenomena do not essentially exist? Question, right? How phenomena do not essentially exist? Therefore, what exists objectively in, in terms of own essence without being posited through the power of subjective mind is the call self. Now become very clear. How phenomena does not essentially exist. Therefore, what exists objectively, subject and object, right? right? What exists objectively in terms of its own essence without being posited through the power of subjective mind is called self, intrinsic nature, essential nature. Please read few times this sentence. Thus Chandrakirti states how phenomena do not essentially exist. Therefore, what exists objectively in terms of its own essence without being posited through the power of subjective money is called self or intrinsic nature. Is it few time then you will remember the meaning of self, meaning of in intrinsic nature. Then next sentence, the next, the absence of this quality, absence of this quality, what quality? Mean what exists objectively in terms of own essence without being posited through the power of subjective mind is the, the quality. The absence of this quality in the person is called selflessness. Selflessness of the person. If absence in the phenomena such as eyes, air, and so forth is called selflessness of the object. Selflessness, selfless. What does it mean self? Self mean 
what exists objectively in terms of its own essence without being posited through the power of the subjective man is called self. Therefore, we call selflessness of the person, selflessness of the phenomena, like eyes, air, and so forth, is called the selflessness of the objects. Hence, one may implicitly understand the, that the conception of the intrinsic nature as present in the persons of objects are the conception of the true self. Is that that means two kinds of self? That means two kinds of selflessness. That means two kinds of negation. Therefore, there's a two kinds of emptiness. Right? That means when we negate the negation on based on the person, the emptiness of the person. When you negate the negation on the other phenomena, then we call emptiness of the phenomena. Here, you know, two kinds of emptiness we can establish based on the how, you know, where we negate the negation. Uh, two kinds of emptiness. The negation is exactly the same meaning. So here you few things you need to remember. First, how does ignorance superimpose intrinsic nature? How in ignorant, you know, you know, uh, impose. Uh, ignorant superimpose intrinsic nature. Then when we when we think, when we hear nature essence, there can be two kinds. One based on the conventional phenomena. For example, his nature, the person nature is very angry. He, he or she is naturally very compassion. Right? This is we talking based on the conventional phenomena. Because last time somebody asked this, this question. Nature essence. Also, there's another meaning of the nature and essence which is here uh, you know what uh, what exists objectively in terms of his own essence without being positive through the power of subjective mind is called self self nature essence then the absence of this quality, you know, whatever phenomena is a lack of this quality, then this uh, emptiness of the phenomena. For example, the marker pen, absence of, you know, intrinsic existence is the emptiness of the pen. Let me based on the person, the person is absence of the quality which is the intrinsic quality. The person which is absence of the intrinsic quality is the emptiness of the person. Okay. Then commentary on the four stanza says standard D. Self is an essence of the thing that does not depend on other. It is intrinsic nature. The non-existence of that is selflessness. Because of the division into the object and person, is understood as a twofold of selflessness of object and selflessness of person. I think what is it? Please, everybody try to memorize this sentence. Then there's a quotation from the 400 stanza. Mm -hmm. 
self is a, an essence of the thing. Right? What does it mean self? Is an essence of the thing that does not depend on other. Is meaning of self. It is an intrinsic nature. The non-existent of the, the non-existent of that is selflessness. Because of this division, division into object and the persons, it is understood as a twofold, a separateness of object and separateness of the person from the found stanza. Then there's another question. The conception of the person as an existing by way of their intrinsic characteristic cannot be a conception of the personal set. I think this is a bit difficult for you to understand. So at the moment we can leave here. Before I move the next uh, a topic, why not we can have some discussion? Then the you know the idea of ignorance, idea of emptiness become more clear. Okay, anybody has any question? Is there anything I must clarify? Yeah, uh, we have a question from Christine. Christine, you can go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, Gishela, mm -hmm. under the stanzas, the first line, self is an essence of things that does not depend on others. Yeah. Is it the, uh, the conventional thoughts or the consciousness? Sorry? Um, the first line, self Wait. is an essence of things that does not depend on others. Yeah. Uh, is the others the uh, conventional thoughts or the consciousness? Uh, it's, uh, it's the same thing. Not depend on in the conventional, con conventional thoughts depend on consciousness. The meaning is same. Yes, you are right. Essence of thing that does not depend on other mean depend on not depend on consciousness, not depend on awareness, not depend on the conceptual consciousness. Yes. So this means the meaning of self, right? It is the it is an intrinsic nature. The non-existence of that is selflessness. Yes, you are correct. Thank you, Gishila. Yes. Any question? Uh, you want? You like to ask questions? Uh, you can. Yes. Unmute yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, Gishila. Hmm? Okay. Um, I I have a question. It could be related to the, this topic. Uh, it's more of advice. Uh, that I'm reaching out. Uh, for um, so uh, I'm in a situation that um, been looking for a job for some time, and one comes around. Uh, I uh, I anticipate the job can be very challenging, right? So when I say I anticipate, because uh, it's based on my past experience. Uh, I know the issues. I know the workload. I know uh, many people involved that will be beyond my control. So just thinking about it, right, I felt stressed. I get very, very worried and I, uh, that I cannot do well in this role. And um, so um, I reflect upon it. I, I tried a few times uh, through meditation and just reflection, why do I feel stressed? And um, I, I realized maybe it is because my wish uh, my strong wish to, to succeed in the role and not disappoint anyone. And um, I also felt people can easily misperceive uh, you no matter how hard you work because you are evaluated on the performance and the result. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying to eliminate this fear, right? So the fear seems to be a projection of my mind and it's uh, negative, right? 
And I've been making efforts trying to seek clarity uh, of the mind and, and what would be the, a better approach in my meditation um, to clear this mind and to understand what is the delusion and uh, that delusion that causes fear and sometimes panic attack. Um, so it's like, yeah, just, just trying to find out, is there an, another way that I could reflect, meditate that, that can be more effective? This is what you are saying, you know, you know, meditating. Actually, you are not really meditating about the, you are just uh, making a lot of reflection about the, the, the situation. Yes. Every, everybody, first, everybody must have a certain confidence about what you are going to do what you have been doing. First, you must have a, you know, a solid confidence. If you are, you know, lacking confidence to take the job, then you can have all kinds of fear going on in your, in your mind, a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, a lot of worry. Then you are just, you know, uh, circling the thoughts in your mind, you never try to overcome the fear, doubts, and worry. They were first, you might think, I have an ability, I have a knowledge, I have an experience to take the job. Yes, first you need to, you must have a confidence based on your knowledge, experience, and understanding. Second, Yes, it's not easy to take the job. The job is very difficult, very complicated. You know, there are so many people who make a problem for you. Second, you should think, when I take the job, I will do mistake. Definitely, I do a lot of mistake. People will complain. This, is, this means nobody can be perfect. Nobody can be perfect. How much you are intelligent, how much experience you have, still, you know, you do mistake. That means none of the person is perfect, complete to do job, to do any jobs. Second, you should think, yes, I cannot be very, you know, perfect to take that uh, job. That means I will do mistakes. Okay, it's okay. So I will learn how to overcome how to fix the problem when I actually take the job. Now you are not really taking the job, you are not really entering into the situation, you are just looking you know, around, going around, looking around. That means you really cannot reduce the fear because you are not actually enter into the job to do, you know, start to do things. So, my advice for you, yes, you have a fear, you have a doubt, you feel very, you know, difficult to take the job. My advice you, you just take the job, accept the job, you start your job. So then after you starting your job, then you will have all kinds of problems here and there. Then you need to know how to overcome. So without you really taking the job, without you really, you know, uh, started your job, how you can overcome. If you're just looking from outside, you never saw the problem. You never can have a strong confidence to take the job. For example, look at me. Look at me, look at all of you know, I'm not really, you know, uh, feel embarrassed to speak English. I know my English is very broken English. Still, you know, I'm learning English here and there, try to, you know, try to pronounce very correctly. So once, when I start, then I need to know, I need to learn how to overcome. It's the same thing for you, you just, you know, if you have a knowledge, you have experience, yeah, yeah, uh, you know how to take, the, how to, you know, do the job, you just step your, you, know, you, you take the job, enter into job. At the same time, you have all kinds of problems, then most important you need to know how to overcome
how how to fix the problem, how to fix the you know like communication with other you know workers. Yeah, that means for you, I think you just yeah yeah keep thinking about you know this so difficult, very complicated. I will have this, I will that have problem. Therefore, you cannot really overcome the sense of fears, sense of worry. You should not be like that. Go and take a job and start. Then learn how to overcome. Don't you think so? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to overthink a lot. Yeah, yeah. That means you're circling the top, you know, you don't have a new thought, you're just circling, circling yeah, yeah. Again, and again. Yeah, okay. like, like a, a little Twitter becomes tornado. <laughs> so I yeah. should stop that thought. Yeah, yeah. You must to... stop and go and take a yes. job. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Madam, my brother and sister, so. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or you can type in the chat window. Kishila, currently there is no question on the queue. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, okay, please. Um, earlier, you, you know, we were talking about um, intrinsic existence and you said that, um, you know, as, uh, generally phenomena is established by thought and name. And if we and if without depending on thought and name, and you still find something there, that is the object of negation. So that the object of negation becomes um, intr intrinsic nature. Is that correct? That is the meaning meaning of the intrinsic nature. Okay, for here I think can you uh, uh, repeat again? Because there's something I think I, I want to add on your question. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yes. Um, uh, you said earlier that phenomena is established by thought and nature. Okay. First, I think not only you, for everybody, can you differentiate establishing and arising is a different or not? Okay. Establishing arising is yeah. Est established by thought and name is like the mind the ordinary thought is naming naming the object yeah naming the object right yes so let's say example we don't talk about you know all sentient beings there must be a place there must be a land Without any human being, you know, none of the human being around there. Don't you believe this? Do you believe this kind of things happen? Is there? Oh uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes. For example, when you go, when you go at the very deep level of the ocean, mm -hmm. so it, usually human being cannot go there, ex except if they use the the oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. There's a place. There's no human being living there not of the human, human being living there. But that, that area, things are arising. Right? Something there. There must be something there. But without human beings, the things we cannot say, oh, this is rock. This is like a fish. Like a, this is a jellyfish fish. We, there's no such a concept. It doesn't mean there's no such a thing there. Right? There's something there. Those are not established as a rock, as a like a fish, as a jellyfish. We never establish. Nobody established. Nobody name. That means first we must differentiate arising, depending on causes and conditions. Everything is arising around us. Establishing means the things we establish as a particular object, like a solid, then we name stone, then we name diamond, we name like a turquoise, we name, you know, gemstone. Everything is a solid phenomena. Yes. Okay, can you repeat your question, please? <laughs> yeah, so now that, you know, now that you have distinguished between 
um, establishing by thought and arising depending on causes and conditions. Mm -hmm. All this does it is it the same as um, you know what you said earlier? Your mind is quite close to emptiness. It is not emptiness yet, but it is leading the way to emptiness. Yes. And it helps us. Um, it helps us understand emptiness, but we are. It is. It's not the same as emptiness. Is is that correct? It's very correct. For example, when we do, I'm giving you example. When we do the, you know, the like sadhana, for example, Yamantaka sadhana. So there's a two kinds of sadhana. One is the the generous the uh, generous stage. Second is the the completion stage. At the beginning, at the, as a beginner who practiced the Yamantaka Sadhana or Gua Samaja, Chakra Samaja, Vajra Yogi Samaja, at the beginning, as a beginner, you don't have a really good understanding how to arise yourself as a deity. Therefore, as a beginner, as a beginner of the you know, practitioner, Simply, you just think, I'm Yamandaka, I'm Yamandaka, I'm Yamandaka, I'm Yamandaka. You just think this way. It help you to realize how to arise yourself Yamandaka, right? That means, as a beginner, you really cannot uh, go emptiness, you cannot uh, realize emptiness directly, you cannot go there. As a beginner, you think that way, and when you are kind of understanding emptiness, kind of, for example, His Holiness many, His Holiness said many times, all phenomena are naturally emptiness. For example, you analyze where you are, which one you, right? Mm -hmm. Your body is not you, you know, your organs are not you, your consciousness is not you. He said, His Holiness, you analyze that way. So when you analyze that way, Finally, someday you can feel, oh, I'm not there. It doesn't mean you realize emptiness. It doesn't mean you realize the mean similar with the emptiness, very similar kind of emptiness. Actually, it's not the emptiness. Yes, I can say you are correct. Yeah, thank you very much. That, that's quite clear. Thank you. Welcome. Any question? Yes, Krishna. Uh, okay. In Tibet. In Tibetan terms, is there a separate term for intrinsic and nature? And what is the difference between nature and intrinsic nature? For example, Buddha nature, whereby this nature in consequent middle way school uh, should not be intrinsic nature. Is this correct? Buddha nature. Yes, you are right, you know, whoever asked question. When we see the sentence, the words, nature, is, you know, it, it depends on the context. Depend on the context. We cannot apply the same meaning nature for all everywhere. For example, Buddha nature, you know, Buddha Garba, Tathagata Garba, Buddha nature. The Buddha nature, there's a two different views about the Buddha nature. Below the Pasangika school, Buddha nature is a potentiality. It's a potential. You have a potential to be a Buddha. To be a Buddha. Right? For example, the master sit. The master sit. As a potential to produce a oil is a potential. This Buddha nature means one for, or from one point of view, you have the potential to be a Buddha. This is a, also Buddha nature. Second, according to the Pasangika, the potential, they don't, you know, Buddha nature is not the potential. Buddha nature means the emptiness of the mind, the 
emptiness of the mind is the Buddha nature. That's a, the nature, this is one of the meaning. Second, the fire nature is hot. Water nature is a kind of, you know, like a, was moisture. So this is talking about the, their, their uniqueness, their uniqueness. Fire, fire has a very unique feature, which is hot. Water has a very unique nature, which is moisture. It's talking about the uniqueness. The Buddha nature is talking about the potential, or you have the basis to be Buddha. For example, this marble pen cannot be Buddha because it doesn't have a potential to be Buddha. It doesn't have the basis to, you know, be a Buddha at nature. Right? Then another mind is a very common when you, you know, listen teaching from Tibetan master. Also many, uh, like a Chinese master says, oh, our mind nature is very clear and awareness. This nature is meaning the man has the potential to perceive the phenomena, to aware the phenomena. Therefore, our mind is a very clear and ability, have an ability to perceive. So this is talking about the best of the function, the functionality, that right? functionality. Then Again, intrinsic nature, as a, again, you know, is a different, is depend on the context, context, you know, in, in, intrinsic existence. For example, commonly, when it says self appear, self appear Buddha, naturally appear Buddha image. Because when you go to Nepal, you can see, oh, this Mat Aryatara, you know, naturally appear is what does it mean is appear the buddha image is, is you know appear on the rock without human craft is a meaning of naturally existent intrinsically arise is one meaning when we think about you know the uh, uh, intrinsic Meaning, context based on emptiness mean, according to this context, intrinsic mean, exist, not depend on thoughts. Establish, naturally establishing, not depend on thoughts. Is that it is not therefore it's very much depend on the context. Yeah, Tibetan we have a very clear words, right? It's, uh, what we call essential existence, Rangu Moyotuba. Intrinsic existence, Rajinji Tuba. Autonomous, autonomously existent, Rawang Tuba. So Tibetan is, I think, same thing in the who study in Chinese Lamrim. It's a very clear words, very particular, very profound, very particular, very clear. So when we use English, the English language is actually not in a, you know, kind of not the right language to explain the emptiness, you know, very precisely. Therefore, when you when we study in you know, Lamri based on English, so we have a lot of confusion. Yes, Tibetan has a very clear words. Also, you know, when you really think about the meaning, right? Rangoni Tuba means Rangoni Tuba means arise from their side. Rangoni Tuba. Then Rangjinji Tuba means arise safely arise safely arise from their side is that right? 
Rangun Yutuba arise from themselves. Rajin Yutuba mean arise safely. Sutu Yutuba mean arise solidly. So we have a different, you know, uh, words. So when you think actual meaning, it's not easy to understand. Yes, next question, please. Okay, uh, we have a uh, few minutes. Yeah, Christine, uh, you ready? Sorry, Gishila, I have another question. Uh, just, just now, Gishila mentioned about arising, established, mm -hmm. and just naturally established. Mm -hmm. so the understanding of arising is that things arise, arises dependent on causes and condition. Established means uh, things are only established by conceptual thoughts or consciousness. Uh, my understanding is only by human beings. Is that true? Or is that um, Therefore, uh, first is very, you are very correct. Arising depend on cause condition. Doesn't matter whether they are human being or not human being they are. Things in arise from cause and condition. Definitely, no doubt. Establish means yes, establish mean we establish, we human being establish based on our human thoughts. Establish not necessarily established by human being. For example, form and formless realms. They are no human being, but they have a, you know, they, are, they have a different things are there based on established by their own mind. Therefore, I told you that when you go, when you, when you look at the, this uh, documentary about the uh, space, space, right? When you reach there, that area, look like you don't have a wet. You are looking like a flying piece of paper. Right. Also, everything can change when things reach to a certain level. This means it's a very clear indication. Nothing can establish, can be there according to we establish. Right. Things can change when the environment change, when the human being change, things can be changed. This means this is a very clear indication. None of the phenomena exists, you know, kind of solidly, ultimately. If things exist ultimately, I mean it cannot be changed. It can be same everywhere, everywhere. For example, here is the water. If I do upside down here, you know, the water come out. When you bring the water in the like uh, space area or of the moon, when you put upside down, the water never come out. But the water becomes like solid. So that time, the, the things in the cup is water or not? It's no liquid. It's not like solid, right? They are not necessarily established by human thoughts. The things in the human realms established by human. The things in the form realms established by a formless being, right? And things, you know, two things come together, like human being brings something, formless being something. We cannot agree each other because we establish by based on our thoughts, they established based on their thoughts, not necessarily established by human being. Yes. Gishila, you just uh, mentioned naturally established. Actually, there's not such a thing, you know, based on the Buddhist, uh, based on the uh, Buddhist uh, tradition, nothing really established naturally. We, there, there's no such a thing happen naturally. Naturally mean behind there's no such a cause and condition. It's come like that, right? So, if you follow strictly Buddha teaching, generally, yes, based on the you know, human concept, based on the culture, we can say naturally 
existent naturally arise in the logically there's no such a thing we can say naturally arise for example we in every day we are getting older we think naturally you know we are getting older actually no we are getting older because of due to causes condition is not natural naturally is not you know like a causelessly it has a cause yeah okay, thank you thank you kekila okay so thank you so much all of you is there any question uh, no no more, sure. mm. no more right? yes no more so because uh, what i thought about you know this uh, the topic you know negation wisdom emptiness it is so important to read the book you know the lesson audio and teaching we not just rely on you know listening and reading books we seriously need analyze analysis we seriously need to analyze okay nagarjuna said this or you know chandragiri said that and the rest of the master said this so which one is true which one is true right so if you ask this question you are saying okay nagarjuna said that but i believe that way now you can be the center okay i believe this way nagarjuna said that way so which one is true my side or what he said is true then i said you in order to realize emptiness you don't have to be intelligent you don't have study so many years you don't have study with the many books simply you need lot of reflection you need to do lot of analytical meditation analyze a one based on one object based on one object if you analyze you know based on the water bottle use the same water bottle for few days few months analyze one day then you will realize the emptiness of the water bottle then since for you all phenomena you can say all phenomena like the water bottle then you know you will realize emptiness of all phenomena so when you analyze you, you must analyze based on one only one object like a chair like a car you know like a computer whatever you use reflect on one object for few months or you know few few years then definitely one day you know you will uh, we will realize emptiness of the phenomena then the idea we can apply for all phenomena then you know Uh, definitely we can uh, not just only rely on the books and audio and teaching you need you know self analysis self realizer self study mean you reflect on the work one one particular phenomena then you know we hope there's a hope to realize emptiness for example he suddenly said you know first he was very much inspired by the uh with this other way of life the hypocrites great love and compassion bodhicitta the age of it around 27 28 he became very interested about emptiness since he every day do lot of analytical meditation analyze analyze about the phenomena analyze analyze now recently he said you know he is almost overcome for uh, all the affect emotions ignorance and he said you know i hope i can achieve uh, liberation in this lifetime right then we also have to do the same way please please i'm really requesting all of you not just attend the class not just only do recitation chanting prostration we must do a lot of analytical meditation analyze the phenomena for realizing emptiness right because so many years 
we have been doing a lot of recitation, chanting, you know, like all kinds of practices, but actually we are lacking the analytical meditation and meditation. So we have to be more serious about meditation, particularly analytical meditation for realizing emptiness. So analytical meditation, we can apply for everything, for impermanence, changing momentarily. Also, we need to analyze to realize that death. And we know one day we're going to die, death will come, but we need to study the uncertainty of the life. We are, we are sure, you know, we thought, oh, I can believe another like a few months. We never think, oh, I can be died tomorrow. So analytic, analytic meditation is very important. So not, not just attend the class, not just attend the puja and chanting, do more analytical meditation for realizing emptiness. And thank you so much for attending the Lamrim class, particularly the wisdom chapter, not easy to understand, I know. Therefore, you know, one, the book is uh, very extensive, a lot of words, a lot of quotation. I said, uh, you read, you know, a few pages, when you find few sentences very, you know, kind of important, very useful for you, memorize the sentence. Then you keep moving next page and next pages. Suddenly you can find, oh, this sentence is a very useful. It's really, you know, something there that you memorize. Right? For example, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa, he was uh, reading the Buddha Palita, right? Then he was reading the Buddha Palita page by page, sentence by sentence, sentence by sentence. Then one day he realized emptiness related to one particular sentence. So for him, this sentence really, you know, panic, panicked his thought about emptiness. So you, we, you know, it can be same as, you know, you read the rim or the quotation, some quotation, it really, you know, bring you deep understanding of emptiness. So please don't give up, you know, reading the Lamin books, other books. At the same time, do a lot of analytical meditation. And thank you so much for attending the Lamrim class. At the end, we usually, as a, usually we do the dedication. First, you know, we dedicate all the merit to able to practice bodhicitta, able to realize emptiness or becoming Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. So while we are studying, while we are practicing Dharma, practicing Bodhicitta, practicing wisdom, we have so many obstacles, the inner, the external obstacles. Please dedicate the merit for reducing all kinds of obstacles, free from the obstacle, to have a good progress in the Dharma practice. In order to practice Dharma, in order to realize emptiness, bodhicitta, so and so, we need the good environment, which is calm, peaceful, free from all kinds of wars and fighting. Therefore, we dedicate the merit to reducing all kinds of fighting and war, have a peace, peaceful environment, with all parts of the world. Last, we dedicate the merit to benefit all sentient beings, particularly your families, your relatives, your friends, neighbor, co-workers, whoever close to you. Jamba bhavya jidra jamba hadam pundu zambo adhyayan de jid Deda kunji jesu adalo jengi vandida dhamja rabbi 
Chazo Tony, Tower, Rimbo, Jim, Magia, Banamaki, Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.